Hello for more, so welcome to Tinks Invest. Talk about investing, finance, and professional development for today's investments only. The investment talk today will be Ethereum Ticket ETH. First, I just want to say happy Friday, everybody. Hope a great week so far. We are looking forward to the weekend. Respect to recording time of 9.07 a.m. on the Eastern Time, Ethereum country, $3,364, down about 3% so far. Respect to overall crypto market is relatively red today. Respect to Bitcoin down about 1.78%, Dogecoin down about 4%, Cardano down about 4% respectively as well, while Solana down about 11%, selling off from the $215 mark, which is the all time high that we tested yesterday. Sells going hover back down to the $199, re attempt to rebound back up to be above the $200 mark. But subsequently, a lot of public investors have sold down uh, to currently seeing that we are hitting to the $170 mark. Uh, so with respect to the technicals, we can see that we don't have any you know, substantive platform below, uh, not until we hit the $66 mark. So would I be buying anytime soon? Um, I think we have a relatively sharp drops from here. I hope that we will consolidate somewhere around like the $142 or somewhere around like the $100 because these are levels that were tested before. But these are extremely non-substantive, right? Because of the fact that we did not have enough time to, you know, basically erect this, you know, financial assets and architectural perspective, nor, you know, in the supply and demand dy dynamic perspective either, right? We have dragged up so enormously, overbought on all levels, despite some sell-off that we experienced from the 215 to now the 179, we are still extremely overbought, right? So going back to Ethereum, uh, with respect to the news I've been picking up earlier this morning, I've been reading up the news ever since 6 6.30 this morning. Um, I woke up relatively early again. I got I, I was out really, really late last night with my senior advisor. We were just uh, talking for hours, um, I guess, him and I have a lot in common, so uh, it was just a good conversation, very productive overall. So with respect to some news, um, I would say collectively, uh, we have some reinforcement and regurgitation news, talk about what is Ethereum 2.0, why does it matter, uh, coming from Decrypt about two hours ago, talk about basically with respect to the London 4th debut that happened about two and a half weeks ago. What is the subsequent value proposition for the 2.0 going forward? What is the trajectory? for the price point for Ethereum going forward, and what are some lack thereof, some errors of improvement that we need to further sustain going forward, right? So it's an informative article. I'll talk about, you know, obviously, why is Ethereum the second largest cryptocurrencies by market cap at the moment? Why is it the one that have the, you know, the best shot of outperforming Bitcoin in the near future? So interesting read. So with respect to the other one on Fortune Magazine talk, uh, four hours ago, talk about stock and futures rebound. Uh, which is something we have seen, right? We are seeing that on top with respect to the growth stocks and the uh, tech stock. It seems like we are rebounding ever since, you know, the percolations around the negative uh, COVID variant news that seems like it's spiking, you know, regionally in the U.S., but also globally as well. Um, so that's something we have to be cautious of. Uh, but at the same time, while it rebounds, you know, with that anti-correlation effect, crypto goes down, right? And which is one of the reasons why we are seeing some negative correlation effects occurring uh, across the crypto market today. So it's not a coincidence, right? And another one talk about on Bazinga about four hours ago again, talk about um, some of the uh, activities that is happening around like other altcoins like Algo, Algo Rent, uh, if I'm not mistaken correctly, the ticker is ALGO has shot up 143.5% over the last 30 days. It seems like it's outperforming Ethereum, Dogecoin, and Cardano uh, over the last 30 days, right? So congratulations to the ones that bought in in this crypto assets. But it seems like it's more of a you know euphoric hype, uh, more of a pump and dump type of scheme based on my you know um, preliminary uh, depiction so far. Another one talk about on Fortune magazine 12 hours ago, talk about crypto prepare for the war with SEC. So this is something that we've been uh, hearing for months now, right? With respect to, firstly, the I'm just keeping tabs in terms of like the chronological, chronological order um, that with respect to the foreshadow, the first one is the Janet Yellen meeting that she held with all the financial regulators about two months ago 
I'll talk about the, the stable coins, right? And the subsequent crypto bills that's going to be releasing, right? And then subsequent to that, we heard about Don Byers released that 57 or 58 pages of a crypto bill uh, listing out all the objectives uh, or infrastructure or compliance restrictions for crypto assets going forward, right? So it's kind of like a manual guide uh, instruction book on what to do, what not to do, what is the right terminology, how to categorize this, and et cetera, et cetera, right? And then we also heard from the SEC president, uh, Gary Gensler, um, and he is uh, someone that's extremely negative uh, towards crypto. He's been calling, um, using relatively negative vocabularies, right, to describe crypto assets, calling it scam, calling it fraud, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, with that cognitive bias um, can obviously, you know, drive some uh, negative pressure, right? Knowing the fact that he is a person of, of a, you know, of power. He is a, a public figure, you know, representing the United States Security Exchange Commission. Um, so that can obviously have some negative correlations. Uh, and ultimately, with respect to his personal incentives, uh, with his ties to corporations and whales, we don't have clarity around that. We, I'm not his friend. I don't know him. Uh, something we have to be cautious of, you know. But ultimately, we are in the business of risk mitigation, right? So whenever we see any news media affectation that is, uh, you know, kind of shaky, you have to really read it with a grain of salt, right? And that's why using technical analysis and reading up the news and you know detecting with your spidey sense to understand the motives um, on and then using doing quantitative research and analysis on understanding the price level to dollar cost average at is always the way to go right and then another one talking about uh with respect to um another algo uh algorand a l g o i don't know if i'm pronouncing it correctly the price doubled in two days uh, ethereum revival ascent um so another regurgitation news talking about um you know just to build, basically comparing the two right uh, uh algo versus eth right and then another news talk about in more of a trivial one a zinga talk about like 15 hours ago talk about mike tyson loves crypto but with respect to does he prefer solana or does he prefer ethereum so with respect to the article that we've seen uh it seems like he has some exposures in bitcoin and he does have some exposure in the Ethereum as well. Um, but he doesn't really specifically talk about like with respect to um, his diversification or his holding size. Um, so that's something interesting to know. It's like another name drop. Like I know Reese Witherspoon, she talked about um, in a recent article that she's invested into crypto, into specifically Ethereum, right? With the NFT adoptions that we've been hearing so far, right? So I'm not surprised if like Mike Tyson got in the game as well. A lot of celebrities are people just just as us, right? And then the last one, this is uh, an interesting one. Talk about at Standard Charter goes bullish on Ethereum, predicts that Ethereum will reach thirty five thousand dollars mark. So another speculations, if you may, um, you know, Standard Charter is a it's a bank that's mainly or predominantly based off the Asian Pacific region, um, and seems like every bank, every analyst have their own quantitative model on projecting out if their price predictions. So to each his own, uh, but I think, you know, it definitely put a stamp of approval from a good uh, reputable large corporations globally uh, next to Ethereum, which, you know, good for us, you know, for long-term investing, right? So now going back to Ethereum, we are down about close to 4% so far. It seems like we are, you know, still within, you know, the late stage of complacency. And if we look at the chart, right, it seems like, you know, some people are probably freaking out right now. Are we in the anxiety stage? And I would say we are in the early innings of it, right? We're going to see more sideways oscillations going forward, you know. And right now, the level that we at right now is technically not a real level. We're basically floating in air right now. The real level is really the 3... 1150 which is way later or the two or the 3225 which we have formed recently but if you look backward a little bit more i'm not going to go back all the way the real level is really the 3150 so if we get there uh in which will be the likelihood will be high that could be a, a you know not a bad level it would be a wise decision for you to dollar cost average at 
But you know, for me, ideally, I will wait until we go back to the low three thousand. And I know the some of my friends here on YouTube are very you know diligent and have been you know putting uh, buy orders at a certain level that we have identified so far. And I know some people got really lucky at the three thousand dollars mark. So congratulations to you, You're making a relatively good gains in the last couple of days so far. With that no you know short moment momentarily uh, of a of a swing trade, if you may, right? Uh, but with respect to um, just like following the fundamentals, we know that we will see more coming, right? That's just a matter of fact, right? And we need to go through this oscillation for us to reach above all-time high by next year at the same time, right? And I think the market cycle should do rates around that spe you know, that level of uh, time duration going forward. In respect to MACD, we are still you know, leaning down despite our size, you know, most depleted right now, but we still have some room to fall down to, you know, we at the 48 right now, ideally you want to be buying starting at the, like the mid thirties, right? So ideally it would be the 3000, 2750. I would really love 2450 because by then we'll be extremely oversold based on the trend that we've seen right now. Do we see 1750? I think if, if we get there, we're basically drilling oils again. So I don't think so. I really do hope so, but I don't think that will actually be the right occurrence, right? Uh, because people have to be incentivized to sell. We can't just be selling for the sake of selling, right? So I think this is a good sign that we are seeing more discount prices coming. So sales is coming up. Uh, is something you want to be looking out for when sales is starting to come up. This is like the, I guess, like the fall winter sales if you if you like fashion, if you may. So um, so with respect to um, uh, the price target. Again, right, three thousand, two thousand seven hundred fifty, two thousand four hundred fifty. But if you bought in at the again, right, the high three thousand, right, the even like four thousand um, dollars, just hold, right, because long term wise, we will get there eventually. But you will have to sustain mental preparation. Uh, that you you might see some volatility coming. You might see half your money gone, uh, from here to go back to the low two thousands. But long term wise, nine thousand eight hundred in the next twelve months. Um, you know, by September next year, wouldn't be a surprise to me. And you know, standard chart is set thirty five thousand, right? So that's way above, right? And that's something we appreciate uh, for long term value gains. So definitely appreciate you guys. Uh, hopefully, you know, you guys found this helpful. And stay tuned for this coming up. Take care. Bye.